Hi, my name is Patrick Smith, Security Technology Consultant at Ingram Micro and a member of the Cybersecurity Delta Force team. I want to spend a little bit of time with you today to better understand how to secure and protect the cloud. Now, if you've seen our two minute video on securing and protecting the cloud, we talked about the need for a CASB and how a CASB can help to secure and protect the cloud. So let's take a look a little bit more in depth on what a CASB is. So CASB stands for Cloud Access Security Broker. And if you think about a broker, a broker is somebody who handles your transactions on your behalf, right? So a Cloud Access Security Broker handles access to your cloud applications on your behalf and applies security controls to those transactions. So if you take a look at cloud applications, there is a couple of different types of cloud applications. The first of which are called sanctioned applications. And these are applications that are typically provided to you by your company, right? Dropbox for business, Salesforce, Office 365, just to name a few. And again, these are you know sanctioned by your IT de department. So they have pretty good understanding of you know the visibility into uh, what's going in these applications. And of course, we also have shadow IT applications. Now, these are applications that are typically brought in by the, the user. Um, because perhaps some of the sanctioned applications may not be doing what they're looking to do. Uh, but again, as they introduce their own applications, like their own Facebook account, their own Yahoo, personal Yahoo account, um, sometimes the IT department does not have any visibility into these shadow IT applications. That's why they're really called shadow IT applications. And of course, we also have you know, IaaS and PaaS or infrastructure as a service, platform as a service. With the company's business transformation, you know, a lot of times they have custom applications or maybe they have some type of uh, cloud storage or, or servers that are provisioned within the cloud as well that they're using. Now, there was a survey that was performed and they asked some of the enterprise customers on where the sensitive data resided within their cloud applications. Now, it shouldn't come as any surprise to you that about 66% of their sensitive data, and that is data that contains some type of privacy um, in information or some type of personal identifiable information, for example, 66% uh, resided in sanctioned applications. 24% resided in IaaS, PaaS, and custom applications. Now, the really surprising thing was up to 10% of their sensitive data resided within a shadow IT application. And remember, shadow IT means the IT department has no idea that these applications exist, nor do they have any visibility into the type of data that is being sent uh, to and from these applications. So what are the risks? Uh, data that is created natively in a cloud application is typically invisible to networking security. Data that's uploaded to a cloud application from a mobile device is also typically invisible to network security. 50% of traffic is cloud to cloud and also is typically invisible to network security. So you're seeing a trend here, right? Uh, some of the other cloud application security considerations are some of the cloud applications, you know, has that particular cloud service been compromised in the past? In other words, if they've been compromised, maybe there's usernames and passwords that are out there in the wild. Does that application allow for anonymous access? So if you're storing sensitive data in some of these cloud applications, you certainly don't want to have an application allowing anonymous access or not allowing anybody to have access to that, that sensitive data. Is the data encrypted? Do they encrypt it in transit? Going from the device to the cloud application, is it encrypted at rest? Does that cloud application require multi-factor authentication? In other words, you know, just having a password would get you into you know, most of the applications. Well, multi-factor authentication means you need not only a password, but you also need maybe a mobile device that's registered to that particular uh, user. So it's something that they know as well as something that they have. Does the application require uh, meet uh, regulatory compliance? And a and big one is, you know, does that IP ownership stay with the customer or does it transfer over to the service provider? 
Now, one of the, the there's a PDF conversion utility that if you use that particular cloud application to convert your document to a PDF, if you don't read the T's and C's or the fine print, whenever you use that PDF conversion utility, the IP ownership is then transferred over to the service provider. In other words, all your intellectual property is now being transferred over to the service provider, and that could be a huge security risk. Let's take a look and see how a CASB is typically implemented. We have a user that needs to access some type of SaaS cloud application or cloud service. So a CASB will be a broker for that user to access and transact with that cloud application. And the CASB is typically talking to the cloud services via an API. Now, DLP, we talked about, you know, DLP in the two minute video, you know, being able to apply uh, data loss prevention policies to inspect the data, see if it contains any sensitive information. And if it does, make sure that that data does not violate any type of uh, DLP policies. And if it does violate a policy, we have the ability to block it via the API. Now, sometimes a customer will need to access the cloud services from outside the organization, maybe on their own personal device. So we can also use a CASB in a reverse proxy mode. So that user will then access what they call an identity access management solution or IAM solution. And hopefully this has a multi-factor authentication too. So we add an additional security control to this or um, this, the way that we're accessing the cloud services. And then the IAC, the Identity Access Management Solution will then communicate with CASB and integrate with CASB and again, apply the same DLP policies to inspect the traffic and make sure that it doesn't violate any DLP policies. So with a CASB, it helps us to, first of all, identify the type of data, right? It lets us, gives us visibility into um, the, the types of devices that are connecting, the users that are connecting, as well as the type of data that is being sent to these cloud applications. And by getting visibility, we then have the ability to have control, right? So uh, it gives us the ability to take real-time actions. So if anything does violate any type of policies, we have the ability to take control and block that from taking place. And then by doing that, it gives us the ability to apply persistent protection across our entire organization. So I want to thank you and just let, you know, just definitely, if you need any more information on uh, any of these security topics, visit us with, at the securityaligncard.com or contact any member of the Ingram Micro Cybersecurity Delta Force team. This is Pat Smith and stay safe.